In this video, we'll be talking about the moving average model in time series analysis. Now, when I personally first learned about this model, it was really confusing for me. And I think that's because when they teach it, they jump right into stocks and finances and those things which are not so natural to all of us. So instead, we'll be using a slightly different example throughout the course of this video. Here's the setup. Let's say you're a grad student at your university and every month this crazy professor, so this guy right here, hosts a dinner party for all the grad students. And every month you're in charge of bringing cupcakes. Now let's say on average you always bring 10 cupcakes. So that's the first parameter in the moving average model is this mu. So if there was no other changes, everything else held constant, you would bring 10 cupcakes every month to the party. Now remember this professor is crazy. So part of him being crazy is that every month he's going to say you brought the wrong number of cupcakes by some amount. And that amount, so being how many cupcakes he said you were wrong by, e sub t, is normally distributed with mean mu sub e, we're going to say that's zero, and standard deviation sigma sub e, we're going to say that's one. So for example, he might say you're wrong by two cupcakes. You brought two cupcakes too many or one cupcake too less, or he might even say you brought just the right amount. The point is he's uh, going to say that you brought the wrong amount normally distributed, mean zero, and standard deviation one. Okay, so you know this professor has a reputation for being kind of crazy. So you kind of factor that into the amount of cupcakes that you're gonna to bring to the party each month. So the number of cupcakes you're bringing each month is gonna be given by F sub T hat, which is your predicted number of cupcakes. I called it F for food, but you can just think of it as cupcakes. And that's gonna be equal to, remember, your mean mu, which is 10. So that's gonna be your baseline that you're always gonna bring plus some coefficient phi sub 1, and we're going to say phi sub 1 is 0.5, phi sub 1, times the error from the previous month. Now let's think about, let's pause for a second, let's think about why this model makes sense. So basically this model is telling the story of, I'm always going to bring 10 cupcakes to the party, but I'm going to adjust that by 50% of whatever the professor said was my error last month. So it's very natural when you think about it because you're basically just taking information about how wrong you were in the previous time period to make a better estimate for the current time period, okay? And to just uh, hit that point home, notice this is t minus one, so that's the previous time period, and here we have t, so that's the current time period. So to just reiterate, the four parameters in this moving average model are mu, your baseline number of cupcakes, phi sub one, which is the multiplying factor of previous month's error, uh, mu sub e, which is the mean of the error, and sigma sub e, which is the standard deviation of the error. So now to get an even better understanding of the moving average model, let's just work through this table here. So in the first month, since there's no prior parties, you just go ahead and bring your 10 cupcakes. That's your mean. Now in the first month, the professor says, hey, uh, you went over by two. You only needed eight cupcakes. So the next month you say, okay, I'm going to bring my 10 cupcakes but I'm gonna take 50% of the error from last month. 50% of negative two would be negative one. So you'll be bringing nine cupcakes in the second month. Now that month, the professor says, hey, you needed to bring one more. You should have brought 10. Um, so quick notation, this F sub T hat is your predicted number of cupcakes. E sub T is your the error the professor tells you. And F sub T is how many cupcakes you should have brought that month. Okay, so in the third month, you say, I'm gonna bring my 10 cupcakes plus Half of what the professor said last month was my error. So 10 plus 0.5 is 10.5. Let's pretend you can bring fractional number of cupcakes. It just so happens that this month the professor said you were right on point. So how many you should have brought is exactly how many you did bring. So the next month you say I'm going to bring 10 plus the error from last month uh, plus phi times the error from last month, which is zero. So that's going to be 10. Professor said you should have brought two more. Should have brought 12. Now in the last month we have on file here, uh, you're gonna bring your 10 plus half of two, which is 11. Of course, the professor being crazy says you should have brought one more, you should have brought 12, okay? So now let's go ahead and plot these points. Uh, and by these points, I mean this column, which is how many cupcakes you should have brought each month. The first month you should have brought eight. So that's gonna go down here. Second month you should have brought 10. Uh, so that's gonna go right here. Third month, you're gonna should have brought 10.5, so that's gonna be here. Then we have 12 here, and then we have 12 again, okay? So now, if I just crudely connect the dots between all these points, it's gonna look like here, 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 
and then plateaus right there. So that's kind of what it looks like. And of course, we can keep going into future months. But something we can already kind of see is that this trend seems to be centered where? It seems to sort of be centered at this point 10 right here, right? And this gives us a clue as to why it's called the moving average model. Because we have our average of 10, but that average, it's moving all about that average, but it is still staying centered sort of over there, right? In fact, if we continue, you might see that it continues like this, like this, like this. But the point is that it's always centered at 10, okay? So that's why it's called the moving average model. Now to get into a few more specifics here, this is the easiest type of moving average model, often called the MA, which is moving average, one model. And you can probably guess why that's why it's called, uh, because we took one error term into account, which means that in making your estimate of cupcakes for this month, you are only using information about the error from last month. Now you can probably already guess what an MA2 model would look like, right? An MA2 model would look like your predicted number of cupcakes that you need this month is going to be mu plus phi1, the error from last month, and phi2, some other coefficient error from two months ago, okay? Now, just to give a quick note on what the actual number of cupcakes you needed would be, that would be f of t, that would be mu plus phi sub one, e t minus one plus phi two, e t minus two, plus error in the current time period, okay? So here is your predicted number of cupcakes in the given time period, and this is how many you actually needed, which is basically just your prediction plus the professor's error from that current time period. So this is a moving average model, and along with the autoregressive model that we talked about in a different video, forms kind of the foundation of a lot of the models in time series analysis. Um, and in the next video, what we'll talk about is how to know if some random time series that you're given might or might not be a moving average model. Okay, so until next time.